Hey guys, it is Coach Jessica. I just wanted to first of all welcome you guys to the group. I think we got almost everybody in yesterday. Um, um, there's a couple of people who did not um, accept the request yet, but I wanted to make sure we got everybody into the group. I wanted to welcome you today. I wanted to thank you, those of you who have put your stories out there, those of you who are starting to speak up and share about why you're here and what you've gone through so far. That is so, so important to the success of this group. As you can see, I kept the group to a small number of people. And one of the reasons that I did that is because our focus this month is really to dig deep and look at our food behaviors and figure out why we do what we do. Um, there is a belief behind every single behavior that we have. And I really want to help you tackle those beliefs that lead to that behavior. There, if you can discover the underlying belief that affects your food behavior and your food choices, and you can um, overcome damaging beliefs or beliefs that are contrary to truth, that leave you in a pattern of eating that doesn't serve you well, you can overcome this. I know a lot of people did their introductions and I didn't really do one here because I think most people in this group know me already, but I want to just really quickly tell you guys, you know, I am 47 years old. My six year um, anniversary of being clean, I call it food sober, uh, is coming up here in just a couple of months and I am so incredibly grateful for it. I was one of those people or or I was that person who thought I am way too sick to ever get better. I am too far gone. I've been sick too long. Um, there's just no way. I've already tried everything. I've tried every diet. I've tried every self-help group. I've tried um, therapy. I've tried counseling. I was in six different eating disorder hospitals and um, I struggled with emotional eating compulsive overeating. I struggled with anorexia. I struggled with bulimia and um, I struggled with binge eating. And, and I think a lot of times eating disorders, they morph through those different types of behaviors. If you look back on your history, if you're struggling with emotional eating now or binge eating now, at some point in your life, you may have struggled with bulimia. And I'm going to talk more about those things on our live on Saturday, um, specifically about what you might be struggling with. But my point is to tell you that at 41 years old, I finally got to a place where I learned that my disorder was a series of beliefs and behaviors about who I was. It was not who I was, meaning my identity is not what I did with food. And that's what I had believed for so long. And so what I have done for the last five and a half years is really help other people see the truth about what they believe about themselves versus what the actual truth is. We believe lies that keep us stuck in patterns of behavior. And the truth is, no matter how long, I don't care if it's been 41 years, no matter how long you have done something based on a belief that is untrue, when you discover the truth, you can change. You don't have to continue to do that. You can make new um behavior changes and I am proof of that um, in general you know when I had anorexia and I struggled with that I, I'm 5'10 and I weighed around 115 pounds so I was quite quite thin at the point where I was absolutely at my sickest and my heaviest I weighed 309 pounds and again now I don't engage in emotional eating I don't engage in compulsive eating I don't engage in bulimia anorexia any of those things and if I can get well anybody can so I have so much confidence and again I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people over the last several years and seen so many people get free and my goal this month is really to dig into the behaviors a month is not a lot of time but if I can help you think about things differently this month then that means you can get started on the right path to changing your behaviors. Um, the other thing is um, the last couple of months I've run challenge groups and those challenge groups were about food, about exercise, about water, about um, uh, electrolytes and, and nutrition and those kind of things. 
what I wanted to do was bring that into this group too. I didn't want to create a whole separate challenge group again this month, but I wanted to bring in the elements of those challenge groups because our behaviors are one thing and then what do we actually eat? What do we actually do? Um, are we moving forward with behaviors that will help us look and feel healthy? Um, that is part of this also. So I'm going to share some of the graphics that I have created from those previous groups. And if you're listening to this now, what I would like for you to know is that um, I want you to start where you are. If you are in this group and right now you are completely off the rails, you have been eating standard American diet, you have been binging, you have been eating things that are not healthy for you, I don't want you to worry about following one of the two food plans. What I want you to do is take the food list, which I'm going to post, and just decide for this week, between now and next Monday, your one job is to eat the foods on that list instead of the foods that you've been eating. And we're going to take it one day at a time. I highly encourage each of you to check into the group. Say where you are. Say what you intend to do. If you've been off the rails, say today is my going to be my first day that I eat foods that don't harm me instead of foods that do and just take it one day at a time. So what I wanted to create here is a community of people who understand each other, support each other. And like I said, I know about 80% of you guys in this group and most of you struggle with the same thing. It might look a little different for different people, but it's all the same struggle and it's based on um, a belief that engaging in certain food behaviors is going to do something good for you when in fact it actually causes destruction in your life and that's what we bond on so i want to encourage you to open up about that i'm going to post the food list i'm going to post options one and two if you are again if you are sober or you're you're eating on plan but you are not getting the results that you want or maybe you are eating too much of certain things um, I'm going to post those options for you just to give you parameters. And what they are is, you know, it, it asks you to pick an eating window. Um, it asks you to um, have these other parameters around what you do. But um, that's sort of in the background. Nutrition is really, really important. This group is open to, you can ask about nutrition. You can ask about anything, anything at all that I have knowledge of. Um, I um, have a great deal of knowledge about eating disorders. That's what I do primarily, but I also am a certified nutritionist and I can answer any of your questions about that. If you are struggling with um, a behavior issue, um, that is something I can help with. So I'm asking you, I'm telling you what will, what will work the best is engaging here. Do not be shy about speaking up. Say what you need to say. Ask what you need to ask. If you are struggling internally with something, put it out there. See, that sabotaging voice that we listen to, the one that's, that's always telling us lies about what we should and shouldn't do um, or pointing us towards food as the solution for everything, it operates best when you are secluded, when you are isolated, and when you are living in shame. And so actually coming to this group, committing to coming into this group every day and just talking, just opening up about where you are and what you're dealing with, it takes some of the power away from that. And so just coming here and participating every single day is going to help you with that. Again, so I'll post some of those food graphics to get you started. Feel free to ask any questions on that. Um, and again, if you're not currently eating on plan, the goal for you for this first week would literally just be, I'm only going to eat foods off this approved food list. Um, and again, if you have any questions on that, let me know. Um, our live question and answer sessions will be on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Um, I am going to do a separate post that has the link for that. And I'll put it up in the um, featured post so you can find that whenever you want to. And then um, the last thing that I want to talk about is um, addiction. Um, the title of this group, if you signed up for it, it was Overcoming Emotional Eating or Overeating and, and Compulsive Eating. And I, again, I'm going to spend some time this week um, talking about what's the difference in those things and, and why it's important to know the difference. 
But I want you to consider the fact that what you're actually dealing with here is addiction. If you look at the title of the background picture in the group, I actually put the, the dictionary definition of addiction, and I want you to look at those words that it uses to describe addiction or synonyms to describe addiction, and one of them is enslavement. And when I think about my history, my decades where I was obsessed with food, where I was always fighting my body, I was fighting myself, I was always thinking about food, or I was thinking about how I was going to get a hold of it, or I was thinking about how I was going to avoid it, or I was thinking about how I was going to try to lose weight. When I think about all those decades, enslavement is such a good word for what I dealt with. If you have never thought of your issue that you're dealing with, emotional eating, compulsive eating, bulimia, anorexia, whatever it is, if you never really thought of that as addiction, I want you today to start to wrap your brains around that. Go and look at the cover photo and read the definition and the synonyms for addiction. When you think about your relationship with food, one of the things that it's super important for you to realize is that addiction is really what we're dealing with. And because if you can accept that, then you can understand that you need to treat your addiction in a way that we treat other addictions and that is with sobriety. Um, and one of the best ways, I always say actually the opposite of addiction is connection, and that is the reason for this group. When you, when you bring people together and you create connection, it is actually the opposite of addiction. So it isn't just getting sober, it's coming to a place that is safe to talk about what's going on with you, to share your thoughts, and that's what I've tried to create here. So we're going to talk more about addiction, we're going to talk about compulsion, and we're going to talk about emotion, because those tend to be the driving factors in our food behaviors. Um, and again, this group is really open to anything that you guys want to talk about, from your eating disorder, to compulsive behaviors, to emotional eating to, you know, if you have family members that are pushers and don't understand any of those things that you want to talk about, we can. Um, on Saturdays, I always have a an agenda planned. I talk for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, but I'm also open to including things in that agenda that you want to talk about specifically or hear about. So I will start a thread in the group where you can say, hey, Jessica, can you please talk about this on Saturday or can you bring this up? Then the last 20 minutes of our hour-long call, I leave open for you to, com to communicate with me, to comment, to talk about yourself, to connect with each other. And it's one of my favorite parts of, this is my third month that I've been doing this, this type of group. Um, one of my favorite parts is the fact that you guys can bond and talk to each other and I think that creates such a good, good thing. It creates an openness. So um, anyway, just wanted to say hey and let you know that I'm so glad you're here. Hopefully those last couple of people that have not accepted their invites to the group will come on in today and we'll be ready to get going together. If you need some specific direction about your food, um, feel free to ask that. Uh, if you want my opinion on it, if you want some advice about where you should go, tell me wh what you're doing now and maybe what the suggestion would be for you specifically over the next 30 days. I'm happy to do that too. Because again, the main thing is you understanding why you do what you do and what are those behaviors based on? What thoughts and beliefs are those behaviors based on? And um, really overcoming that and conquering that and getting you on the road to thinking differently. But at the same time, I love to see you make progress in your goals. And the way to do that is to address your eating and your movement and your water and things like that. So I'm here for you. I'm excited. I will be here every day. I will check in every single day in these 30 days. And um, that's what you can expect from me. So looking forward to connecting with all of you. Looking forward to you guys connecting with each other. And just wanted to let you know that uh, we really can have an amazing month together. And I believe this is going to be the best group yet. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.